Chapter Ten of From Dictatorship to Democracy, Fourth United States Edition, Twenty Ten, Narrated Faster Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. From Dictatorship to Democracy by Gene Sharp, Chapter Ten, Groundwork for Durable Democracy. The disintegration of the dictatorship is, of course, a cause for major celebration. People who have suffered for so long and struggled at great price merit a time of joy, relaxation and recognition. They should feel proud of themselves and of all who struggled with them to win political freedom. Not all will have lived to see this day. The living and the dead will be remembered as heroes who helped to shape the history of freedom in their country. Unfortunately, this is not a time for a reduction in vigilance. Even in the event of a successful disintegration of the dictatorship by political defiance, careful precautions must be taken to prevent the rise of a new oppressive regime out of the confusion following the collapse of the old one. The leaders of the pro-democracy forces should have prepared in advance for an orderly transition to a democracy. The dictatorial structures will need to be dismantled. The constitutional and legal bases and standards of behavior of a durable democracy will need to be built. No one should believe that with the downfall of the dictatorship, an ideal society will immediately appear. The disintegration of the dictatorship simply provides the beginning point, under conditions of enhanced freedom, for long-term efforts to improve the society and meet human needs more adequately. Serious political, economic, and social problems will continue for years, requiring the cooperation of many people and groups in seeking their resolution. The new political system should provide the opportunities for people with varying outlooks and favored measures to continue constructive work and policy development to deal with problems in the future. Section 10.1 Threats of a new dictatorship. Aristotle warned long ago that tyranny can also change into tyranny. There is ample historical evidence from France, the Jacobins and Napoleon, Russia, the Bolsheviks, Iran, the Ayatollah, Burma, SLORC, and elsewhere, that the collapse of an oppressive regime will be seen by some persons and groups as merely the opportunity for them to step in as the new masters. Their motives may vary, but the results are often approximately the same. The new dictatorship may even be more cruel and total in its control than the old one. Even before the collapse of the dictatorship, members of the old regime may attempt to cut short the defiant struggle for democracy by staging a coup d'etat designed to preempt victory by the popular resistance. It may claim to oust the dictatorship, but in fact seek only to impose a new refurbished model of the old one. Section 10.2 Blocking Coups There are ways in which coups against newly liberated societies can be defeated. Advanced knowledge of that defense capacity may at times be sufficient to deter the attempt. Preparation can produce prevention. Immediately after a coup is started, the putschists require legitimacy, that is, acceptance of their moral and political right to rule. The first basic principle of anti-coup defense is therefore to deny legitimacy to the putschists. The putschists also require that the civilian leaders and population be supportive, confused, or just passive. The putschists require the cooperation of specialists and advisers bureaucrats and civil servants, administrators and judges, in order to consolidate their control over the affected society. The putschists also require that the multitude of people who operate the political system, the society's institutions, the economy, the police, and the military forces will passively submit and carry out their usual functions as modified by the putschists' orders and policies. The second basic principle of anti-coup defense is to resist the putschists with non-cooperation and defiance. 
the needed cooperation and assistance must be denied. Essentially, the same means of struggle that was used against the dictatorship can be used against the new threat, but applied immediately. If both legitimacy and cooperation are denied, the coup may die of political starvation and the chance to build a democratic society restored. Section 10.3 Constitution Drafting The new democratic system will require a constitution that establishes the desired framework of the democratic government. The constitution should set the purposes of government, limits on governmental powers, the means and timing of elections by which governmental officials and legislators will be chosen, the inherent rights of the people, and the relation of the national government to other lower levels of government. Within the central government, if it is to remain democratic, a clear division of authority should be established between the legislative, executive, and judicial branches of government. Strong restrictions should be included on activities of the police, intelligence services, and military forces to prohibit any legal political interference. In the interests of preserving the democratic system and impeding dictatorial trends and measures, the constitution should preferably be one that establishes a federal system with significant prerogatives reserved for the regional, state, and local levels of government. In some situations, the Swiss system of cantons might be considered in which relatively small areas retain major prerogatives while remaining a part of the whole country. If a constitution with many of these features existed earlier in the newly liberated country's history, it might be wise simply to restore it to operation, amending it as deemed necessary and desirable. If a suitable older constitution is not present, it may be necessary to operate with an interim constitution. Otherwise, a new constitution will need to be prepared. Preparing a new constitution will take considerable time and thought. Popular participation in this process is desirable and required for ratification of a new text or amendments. One should be very cautious about including in the Constitution promises that later might prove impossible to implement, or provisions that would require a highly centralized government, for both can facilitate a new dictatorship. The wording of the Constitution should be easily understood by the majority of the population. A constitution should not be so complex or ambiguous that only lawyers or other elites can claim to understand it. Section 10.4 A Democratic Defense Policy The liberated country may also face foreign threats for which a defense capacity would be required. The country might also be threatened by foreign attempts to establish economic, political or military domination. In the interests of maintaining internal democracy, serious consideration should be given to applying the basic principles of political defiance to the needs of national defense. By placing resistance capacity directly in the hands of the citizenry, newly liberated countries could avoid the need to establish a strong military capacity, which could itself threaten democracy or require vast economic resources much needed for other purposes. It must be remembered that some groups will ignore any constitutional provision in their aim to establish themselves as new dictators. Therefore, a permanent role will exist for the population to apply political defiance and non-cooperation against would-be dictators and to preserve democratic structures, rights and procedures. Section 10.5 a meritorious responsibility. The effect of nonviolent struggle is not only to weaken and remove the dictators, but also to empower the oppressed. This technique enables people who formerly felt themselves to be only pawns or victims to wield power directly in order to gain, by their own efforts, greater freedom and justice. This experience of struggle has important psychological consequences contributing to increased self-esteem and self-confidence among the formerly powerless. 
one important long-term beneficial consequence of the use of non-violent struggle for establishing democratic government is that the society will be more capable of dealing with continuing and future problems. These might include future governmental abuse and corruption, maltreatment of any group, economic injustices, and limitations on the democratic qualities of the political system. The population experienced in the use of political defiance is less likely to be vulnerable to future dictatorships. After liberation, familiarity with non-violent struggle will provide ways to defend democracy, civil liberties, minority rights, and prerogatives of regional, state, and local governments, and non-governmental institutions. Such means also provide ways by which people and groups can express extreme dissent peacefully on issues seen as so important that opposition groups have sometimes resorted to terrorism or guerrilla warfare. The thoughts in this examination of political defiance or non-violent struggle are intended to be helpful to all persons and groups who seek to lift dictatorial oppression from their people and to establish a durable democratic system that respects human freedoms and popular action to improve the society. There are three major conclusions to the ideas sketched here. Liberation from dictatorships is possible. Very careful thought and strategic planning will be required to achieve it. And vigilance, hard work and disciplined struggle, often at great cost, will be needed. The oft quoted phrase, freedom is not free, is true. No outside force is coming to give oppressed people the freedom they so much want. People will have to learn how to take that freedom themselves. Easy it cannot be. If people can grasp what is required for their own liberation, they can chart courses of action which, through much travail, can eventually bring them their freedom. Then, with diligence, they can construct a new democratic order and prepare for its defence. Freedom won by struggle of this type can be durable. It can be maintained by a tenacious people committed to its preservation and enrichment. End of chapter 10. Recording by Benjamin Giddens.